right, welcome back. I am your host, Michael Stamatinos. And if you're new to us, this is the Advancing Healthcare Innovation Show. We're just so passionate about healthcare innovation and adoption. And our aim is bringing stories from real people within healthcare that are truly innovating within the space. Big, small, little, they're innovating. They're making things happen. And we've got an action-packed year with some incredible content, amazing interviews. And if you haven't checked out any of the previous interviews, make sure you hit the subscribe button or check out our entire library of interviews. I'm sure you'll be happy with, uh, with, with the interviews that are out there. So today, I'm just, I'm delighted to introduce Anthony Coco, founder and CEO of Head Health. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Michael. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah. So Anthony, I, I just, I want to kind of dive into it because your story is so unique in many, uh, in many facets. So maybe just kind of taking a step back, you can share with the audience a little bit about you, your journey, and how you stumbled upon this particular problem and what made you want to solve it. Absolutely. So, yeah, I don't know if it, you know I stumbled upon the problem. I think the problem just kind of ended up finding me. So, uh, yeah, I'm Anthony Coco, and this whole kind of journey is uh, – started with me having my first migraine when I was 11 years old. And then I had one every single day until I was 27. Right. So I was that medical mystery, the anomaly, you know, I was non-responsive to so many medications. You know, I went through everything, right. The MRIs, the CT scans, the x-rays, uh, multiple physicians, specialists. And I mean, we're talking allergies, we're talking sinuses, right? So it's this complex situation that was, you know, the life that I was living for 16 years. And then in 2010, I had an adverse reaction to a medication. I went to a Mayo Clinic in January of 2011, and I met with a bunch of different brilliant, you know, neurologists, physical therapists, spent a week there. And the diagnosis was, Anthony, thank you so much for coming out. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do for you. You've tried so many of our recommendations. We can maybe suggest some more medication, but we wish you the best of luck. And, uh, you know, me being a, a kind of like that emotional Italian, right? It's uh, that, that crushed me. But what it did is it allowed me to find a new path to put my health first. And it just so happened that I stumbled across a paper uh, by an individual named uh, Alan Purdy, Dr. Alan Purdy. And the title was, is migraine curable? And that was all of a sudden started to illustrate, right? There's maybe the ability to influence triggers and nervous system stimuli. And I just went all in. I became obsessive with it. Fast forward to uh, May 13th, 2011. That was my last migraine. And I haven't had one since. And that is what started the journey to ultimately create the company called Head Health. Wow. I, I have got so many questions. I don't want to bombard you with it, but at, at any point during this journey, what what kept you going? Obviously, you wanted to get better. I mean, where did you? Mm -hmm. you it seems time. like you're just you're a hopeful guy, but where? I mean, there comes a point when you're having a migraine every day. And for those that you know aren't familiar with what a migraine is, can you kind of describe where you were feeling the pain, what it felt like? Can you just kind of make us? kind of get a sense of what you were going through on a day-to-day -day basis? Because it seems like a lot. Uh, you know, a lot, honestly, is kind of uh, an, an understatement, right? So for anybody who has never had uh, a migraine or right does not really know the you know, the commonalities within like the migraine um, ecosystem of us is, you know, sufferers or individuals, it's not just a headache, right? It's this debilitating pain that literally knocks you out. So we're talking dark room, complete isolation, earplugs, you know, I mean, like masks over your face, fetal position. Uh, I almost didn't graduate high school because I missed so many days. I had to give up sports. Uh, I couldn't go to family parties for two years because the sound was just so loud. Um, it was to the point where, I mean, I lost friends. I did not think that my life was going to pan out to pretty much anything. Like I always thought that migraine was going to control because you are just so consumed by it's one day. It could just feel like you're getting hit over the head with a hammer to the next day. You feel like, you know, you're just getting stabbed in the eye with like an ice pick. And it's just this wild journey, but because it's within the brain and the nervous system, 
you can't really take a one size fits all approach. So everybody then starts to feel isolated. You start to feel lonely. So now it right turns into this mental health journey. And really the only thing that you can do is like basically start to think positive thoughts, right? And maybe somehow someday the sun is just going to shine and maybe my window, it might shine through that day. And, you know, you just kind of hang on to that, right? And there's some days where you just maybe like the pain isn't like an eight or nine, maybe it's a six. So you could, you know, hang out with somebody or do something else. So there's just those like little glimmers of hope, but really the inspiration for all of it came down to my grandmother because I inherited the migraines from her. And I saw that woman just battle life, like just do whatever she had to, to show up for her family. And then my mom would always tell me like something good is going to come out of this. We just don't know when or how. And that was like always that thing. It's interesting when you can use the question, what if, you know, what, what if there is something that I can take from this terrible circumstance and turn it and flip it, turn it into a positive and uh, be an inspiration for a lot of other people that are out there that are struggling and suffering. Just how, how many people, struggle with migraines and grapple with this what 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 are we talking about here in metrics wise so within the us we and this is really difficult because just as of 2018 migraines became an emerging market so now there's a lot more money and research um you know with the you know the new cgrp medications that came out but prior to that it was about just Botox, right? But that was off label. But prior to that, it was tripped hands. And that was like 20 something years ago. And so the numbers are kind of estimated, right? Best guess, we think that it's 50 million within the United States alone that suffer from migraine, but it could go more. So you see some estimates globally, we know it's about a billion people. Uh, but within the US that fit my kind of category as the chronic, um, it's estimated that five to 6 million individuals have that just like I did. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you, you are not alone in this when you were thinking around, Hey, I, I don't have a migraine today. When did you start putting the pieces together of what you did to get that end outcome? Walk us through that process. Well, the real question then becomes, right, how much time do we have and, and how deep <laughs> do we, do we ultimately go, you know? So Right. It's because I just like they were inherited. Right. So there's a genetic thing. Then I, I had allergies. I had sinuses. Right. So like my immune system was compromised, um, you know, in a lot of different ways. The way that I was eating as a kid, you know, I mean, it was that Italian household, man, a lot of pasta, a lot of bread, you know, a lot of that good stuff. And yeah, lo and behold, I have a yeast sensitivity. Right. So it's like I was just, you know, throwing, you know, the, just just, you know, what water on the grease fire, like it wasn't good. Right. And then just all the years of, right. The constant, like the, the mental part of it, right. The stigma that's associated. Right. So those are kind of some like factors about how I had to like rebuild my immune system and, you know, kind of go along that path. Right. Um, that's kind of like the, the scientific, you know, nature that was all powered by, right. The evidence base that led me to kind of connect some dots to me personally, um, which then end up like reversing symptoms or mitigating symptoms, um, which then ultimately just end up building my my nervous system to where like they call it a, a bucket theory or a threshold, right? And this is kind of like how I describe it, right? Like at 75%, you have a migraine. Let's say that you wake up every day and you're already at 50. Well, now you only have 25% to play with, right? So let's say that you overslept on a nap that now puts you to 60, right? You eat some piece of food right now, it puts you to 70, but you know, I got five, you get into a stressful conversation, boom, migraine. But you think that stressful conversation is what did it, but actually it's everything underneath. So what happened to me was when I found out that all of a sudden I'm now going into situations and I'm already not like revved up, right? Or I just went through like a particular conversation that normally would have sent me over the edge, but I've got no shoulder pain. I'm not blurred vision anymore. Yeah. And it's like, wait, uh, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden it was like weeks turned into months and months turned into oh, a year. Then it was like constantly going on. And yeah, 11 years later, I haven't had one. And let me tell you, I've tried to give myself one and I've not been able to. So I, 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 I'm kind of curious to see like how far this journey goes. Well, you want to keep the streak going. Yeah, you, right. You certainly right. don't want the streak to break. No. Well, when you, if you've dealt with a 
other folks that have had migraines is is every one person the same or do they have different um mm -hmm. triggers meaning is the solution that you came up with mm -hmm. how applicable is it to the five million that are dealing with chronic migraines what a great question so Everybody's situation and circumstance, because like when we were like, we have stories, right. From all different participants around the world in multiple countries. And I mean, we had individuals who were like C-suite executives, right. Running multi-billion dollar businesses all the way down to individuals who have been on disability for over 25 years. And what we did find out is the journey is the same for everybody. But what it is, is really starting to identify and address the things that create the stimuli within the person. And that in itself is a loaded journey that takes many nuanced ways because we're human beings, man, we're complex. Like, you know, you don't know what you're dealing with, but on a day-to-day -day base with somebody, right? What, how they grew up, what they did, what their means are, the resources, but all that you have to do is start to identify that stimuli and tailor to those individuals. And then now you start to unlock things. That's the same thing as me. And that's where the cool stories start to come in of individuals who all of a sudden go from 17 migraines to two. And they realize, right, it was a sequence of events. And yeah, once then you do that with somebody, it's, it's game on from there. So talk about, so talk about fast forward a little bit. Now mm -hmm. you've, you've discovered mechanisms to mitigate migraines mm -hmm. you you start your streak mm -hmm. when did you come to the point when you said you know what i know there's other people that are out there that are like me and i want to help what what happened after that after you made that decision take us through kind of yeah. where you're at now and where you sort of see the vision for this so i started off as as a health coach right because i knew that lifestyle for me was a very big thing and very big influencer right and if you know, because a lot of people then think with the way that my story is, right, that I'm anti-medication or, or anti, right, with Western medicine, not at all. It's the, it's one of the greatest systems that we have, but in some cases you have to bring them both together, right? Once you understand how a person's lifestyle can then match this, because, right, if somebody had a thyroid removed, you think that we're going to get them off of a medication? Absolutely not. You have to be on that, but there's ways in which, and you can live that coexists with this. So it's right. It's bringing kind of like that best of, of East and West. So how all of this started was a health coaching to then see if we can navigate someone's lifestyle with their current, right. Um, typical regimens. And then how does that journey ultimately progress? So when we first started, right, it was such a complex thing, man, because we're dealing with multiple headache types and like we were, like at first we were given foam books, like thick of material. And I was like, man, we're trying to like overcome headaches, not give people them. Right. So we're like, <laughs> we, we need, we need to put the pause on this. Right. So that, that was a, a long time ago, but then where it progressed was 2017 when head health was formed. We, we knew, right. The market was starting to, to change a bit. There were more individuals like myself, just through conversation, social media started to pick it up. A lot more groups were being active. So we knew, right. There is something out there, but really how do we deliver this information? So at first we started off with basically a course and that course was offered to uh, 56 people in nine different countries. And we had 91% of them reduced frequency, duration, or pain. 23% completely eliminated their migraine. So it's like, okay, now we start to see, right, something progressing. And if we're doing it with just a How code, long was that course? That was 18 weeks. Yeah, so if we did it with myself, navigating, right, with their healthcare team, and over 18 weeks, what else can we do? We did another one during COVID. And so now it's like, you're completely isolated to the whole world, but can the system kind of duplicate itself with maybe just some, some guidance? And it did. But then what we realized is, okay, that's a lot of work and interaction. So now we need technology. We need that empathetic touch to this, to drive it home. So that's where we are right now is we're finishing the technology build to ultimately bring this into the hands of individuals uh, in October and in January. Well, how much of what you also described has, you mentioned it a little bit, is around, you said empathy, mm -hmm. um, just around having authentic community. Can you talk to what that means to an individual that's suffering through this? How much of that really is uh, involved in the in the solution delivery component of it? Truthfully, I think it's everything. Um, and the reason why is 
when you go through this journey, you feel like you're completely isolated and you feel like you're completely alone, right? So there's a lot of those days where you're just spent by yourself, right? Fetal position, dark room, or right? A conversation is all of a sudden something that now turns into a migraine. So when then you start to have those conversations with individuals and all of a sudden they feel like they're rambling and then now you can not only understand what they're saying, but now you can power that with multiple examples, it creates a level of trust, uh, mutual respect, but it really like ties to the core and to the heart of this individual. Like, again, it's not just a cliche, like you are not alone. We actually know what this is like. We know the nuanced factors of this. So now it's free to be authentically you and go through the areas in which you may just not be able to or feel embarrassed to. And then all of a sudden that stigma starts to, to go away. And I think that's where the real magic starts to happen. All right. So you're a success story. Let's talk about maybe some other, some other folks that have gone through your program that have had successes. Can you share some stories without, you know, obviously breaking any confidentiality? Oh, no, Uh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's kind of a cool thing because we've had I think six individuals that now have gone through who are actively working with us right now. So it's, it's very interesting to see, right. That transformation happening, the belief come through. So we had one individual, um, her name is Tracy, right. And so she was a former RN migraine sufferer, uh, 17 migraines a month when she uh, ended up working with me for the first time um, within 17 weeks, got off of five medications and completely migraine free. Um, she had terrible allergies, was able to mow her lawn for the first time, like threw her hands up in the air, took a picture, called me. Right. So um, the big thing that happened with there is, so she had two kids. She was waking up every morning, right. Kind of stressed, actively going. Um, she would love to work out. And it was just a sequence of events from her trying to understand what her foods were, how them to create a stress reduction right in the morning. Those two things started clicking, started building some positive nervous system interaction, And that's how she was really able to build that momentum and yeah, ended up reversing some food allergies and some stuff too. So it was a pretty powerful story on her end. Uh, We had another uh, individual who was out in the UK and the big thing with uh, her actually was uh, she went from 22 migraines to, I think it was four within a matter of about six to eight weeks. And one, one of the biggest things that she did is she was unemployed for about five years. And this was now during COVID. And she now got her migraines onto a manageable part. And she now had the, the courage and the confidence to actually go out and put herself out there. And she was absolutely petrified. And she ended up getting interviewed during COVID and got a job. And this was somebody who thought that when we first started, that she would never be able to have the opportunity to just work again. Migraines would completely control her. And Michael, I will never forget that call. Like she just broke down crying. It was like, I can't believe that like, during the most stressful time in life, I get to celebrate. Like it's like little, little stories like that. And what's what then makes it interesting is one of our past participants who ended up getting a lot of success too as a documentary filmmaker. So I just can't wait for the day to which then we can take those stories and turn them into right something because ultimately to give hope because like we were talking about, like you're not alone. So if we have more stories and more opportunity for that, I think then it's going to become something very special. So how do you classify your solution? Is it a, is it a digital care management system? Is it a digital care? You know, how do you, how do you kind of encapsulate it? Because you're talking about mm-hmm. not only something that can be digitally delivered, through a medium like Zoom electronically, mm-hmm. uh, but you're talking about authentic relationships that are built. And it seems like mm-hmm. people are, you know, they're making friends. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are in a lot of senses. And it's 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 interesting too, because when you're connecting at that type of, of a level, right, you get to learn about, you know, somebody and, and really what they're going through. So it's, right, it has that empathetic touch. It's got a core of that. So that's a lot of, right, the essence of what really drives us drives us because right if my vision is to help improve the quality of life for somebody so that they don't have to suffer like i did and now that creates right a ripple effect over generations like that's that's something pretty powerful right but we're going to look at this from a, a product standpoint right it's a digital care solution that's really powered by technology and our, what our technology 
technology ultimately does is we're able to take massive amounts of complex data and then break them down into simplistic solutions. So it creates an interconnected platform between the user. So they have the app, then the end user, which is a care team. And they can both then interact. So we break down a lot of the silos that exist and, and write the traditional marketplace of trying to get care. So by us bringing all that together, you're now able to come up with solutions a lot faster and collaborate. So ultimately, if we're able to take and just make the you know 15 minute appointment more efficient, right? To where maybe six or seven of it now is actually like getting down to root causes, which we can help identify. Yeah, then I'm able to think that you're right, able to improve the quality of life. I'm curious, have you gone back to Mayo Clinic? No, no but I actually talked to somebody from there not too long ago. Okay. Just, mm -hmm. you know, just to say, hey, you know, appreciate you guys doing what you did for me. And uh, here I am. What has the medical, how has the medical community responded to some of these, some of these early findings? Um, do you have ones that uh, are are, are on, on board with this? Or do you have others that, you know, feel like what you're doing needs to be overseen by a medical professional? How do you kind of tell that line? So everything that we do is rooted in the, right, the, the scientific rigor. It, it has to be because we're dealing right with not only just a neurological condition, but a chronic condition, which then could lead into many different areas, right? So we're absolutely very dedicated to that, right? So that's at the forefront of everything that we do. But I really believe at the end of the day, the doctors are magic makers. We just have a system in which is not efficient for them. And truthfully, the whole entire system at all is just not equipped to really manage chronic illnesses. So we don't look at ourselves as more so of right a direct competitor or we're going to take your business. We just look at this as really an enhancer type of situation. So there's multiple different opportunities in which a care team can interact with us. So it's not like we're taking your patients away because our chief medical officer who's also a headache specialist. In some cases, she's like the non-responsive patients in which she has She's like, I would love to give them this because now there's maybe in some ways they still have to see me, they still have to interact with me, but maybe they can get right better outcomes, which then can build right more productive relationships with them. So the doctor's always at the forefront. We look at this as right, if there are many somebody has to do or right be modified or have that opportunity, we're ultimately then set up right to improve the entire efficiencies. Um, that exists within the healthcare system. So maybe we're actually saving a uh, health plan right on the opportunity to save a little bit of money on MRI costs that maybe don't need to be needed. So it's just truthfully making the whole thing more efficient, which then drives the user. Interesting. So how can how can folks kind of follow your work, follow Thanks. what Health Health is doing, just kind of keeping an eye on the journey and and even looking at some recent success stories, what's the best way for them to keep tabs on what you guys are doing? Yeah, the website is called headhealth.io. That's the best place to check us out. Awesome. Any any final parting thoughts? I mean, your journey is 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 still, you're still mid-flight. Yes. Uh, and there's, there's a absolutely. lot of folks that are, you know, kind of tuning in here. And if there's one ask that you needed to make on this, what, what would that ask be? You know, I think the biggest thing is, the, the connection, right? We want to make sure that we're connected to individuals, whether this be, you know, anything on the business front or even on the individual side, because we want to be able to deliver care. So if there's anybody out there that is suffering or knows somebody, please be able to share this because right again, if we're able to improve a quality of life of somebody that then can trickle down to others and it's just right. It's where, um, yeah, it's where a lot of, a lot of hope can be fulfilled. So yeah, that's the biggest thing that we're asking for right now. Awesome. Well, Anthony, I just want to just take the time out to say it's it's great to know you, you know, you. Uh, and what you're working on is is a real problem. And there's a lot of folks that are working on problems in healthcare that have varying degrees of impact. And when you share not being able to actually get up from a bed, being in a fetal position to seeing you where you are today and amassing this amazing streak, which I hope that it continues to go for a very, very, very long time. And now you can share that with other people and share that methodology. That's really powerful. And so for those that are tuning in, if you found this content helpful for you, I mean, would you, would you mind sharing it on social media? Would you mind liking it, commenting on it with your network? 
we're just really, really grateful to know that we have a lot of folks that care about advancing healthcare and moving it forward. And even more grateful when we have innovators that continue to take action. We've, we're a community of doers, people that want to make things better. And it starts by taking action. So thanks. And I'm looking forward to Anthony, our, our next conversation and hearing about uh, more success stories. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Michael. And then, you know, I just wanted to kind of close with this part right here. Uh, a lot of the, it, it, I said this to you now, I'd like to say it right out, out, out in the open, but a lot of where we've been able to get to is from our interaction and you being able to share your own personal story with me as well. And all of those stories, right, of us working together, you said this, that we are a community, right? So if we really do believe in providing better health outcomes or right, getting individuals in, into situations that maybe could be like myself, you now start to get in a situation with maybe, right, that can create a, a snowball or ripple effect that happens to just you know, continue to improve the efficiencies because we are all in this together. So thank you. You've been, a, right. you've been a, a substantial influence on me. I appreciate it. Awesome. You bet. Well, I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks. Have yourself a great day. You too.